Well, as you can see, I've headed outside this time. No, that's not right. No, what I mean is I did record this video yesterday outside, but I wasn't very happy with it. There was a lot of wind noise. There was a lot of noise in general, even compared to this place. So I thought I'd try again, but do it inside this time. But I did like the B-roll that I shot outside. So I'll still keep cutting back to that. Anyway, where was I? Oh yes, this is it. No more. I'm not doing this anymore. This. See this? No more. Enough's enough. It's just a waste of time. What lens did I use? What settings? What aperture shutter speed combination? Where were you stood even? Does it matter? Do you even need to know this information? Does it help you anyway? Do I somehow have the magic formula to take great photos? No. Will telling you all my settings help you get photos like mine? No. Should I even be making these YouTube videos based on that? No. Why should I tell you? Because as I say, it won't really help you. For a start, the light will never be the same if you visit the same spot. You'll probably use a different camera system to me and that makes a difference. And if you don't stand in the exact same spot as me when you press the shutter, the lens focal length won't match anyway. As an ideal, I would like to use f8 at 1 8th of a second at 100 ISO, but I can't, not always. So I set 200 ISO, my base setting on my camera. I select f8, my optimum aperture for my camera and lens, and most of the time I just go with the shutter speed available for the light, just as you should. Now I often use a 24mm lens, which is 12mm on my camera, as it often suits my location at the time and my ideal field of view. So should you copy that? Does it help you to know that's the lens I used in that situation? What if you want to include a bit more sky for your taste or you prefer more foreground than me? Then your focal length will be different, even if you'd stood right next to me at the time of shooting. And of course your camera may shoot in three x two format, whereas mine shoots in four x three. So that's gonna make a difference to the focal length choice too. So you really need to find this out for yourself. You need to spend time playing with different focal lengths and different settings yourself. Now, you know 17 millimeter is ultra wide. You know 200 millimeter is telephoto. You probably also know a 50 millimeter is called a standard focal length. But how do each affect foreground and background? How do they compress the scene or their perception of compression? What happens if you move closer to the main subject with a wide angle? How does the background change? Now, of course, I could tell you, but isn't it better for you to learn and see in real time yourself to see how that actually happens? And if you really want to learn, then the best way is to study a picture and dissect it yourself. Work out what lens I used. What are the telltale signs of my chosen focal length? Then with that information, go out and practice yourself with the same lens, but try a different lens too. Now, as well as the focal length, try to figure out what the aperture and shutter speed combination was. Why did I use those settings? And if you can't guess, then you probably need to practice more. And nothing wrong with a bit of trial and error. But more importantly, what if you tried the opposite to what I used? So if you think I used an F16 equivalent, what happens if you go and try f2.8 or f4? What will that do? Will the picture now fail because you haven't used my settings? Or will it give you something new, exciting and original? Now the first camera I ever bought was a Pentax P30. It had a program mode that set both the aperture and the shutter speed which was quite unique in those days. Now I bought it because it had this, because I had no idea what apertures did and there was no one to tell me. Yes, I read all the articles in the magazines explaining each one in detail, but with no actual examples in front of me without trying myself, they meant nothing. But in that first week of owning that camera, I spent it shooting my cat and my front doormat at different settings. No, really I did. I was so much simpler back then. Mm -hmm. 
and after the first week and getting the film processed, so two weeks in total, I knew exactly what the different shutter did. I knew how apertures worked. It all made sense when I looked at the results. And so I used the camera on manual mode thereafter for the two years I owned it. Program mode was just a waste of time. So what can you learn? Well, if you see any blur in any of my pictures, unless that's just out of focus, why do you think I use that? What shutter speed choice would achieve that blur? Why not go out and see for yourself? Just shoot, say, 10 pictures of a subject at different shutter speeds and see what the effect is. You see, the thing is, chances are, if I shoot something at, say, 1 8th of a second and you try the same thing, it will be different because of the speed of the subject or how windy it was on my day compared to yours, things just won't match. Yours might even look better because your choice is more suited. Remember, this was just my perception of how it should look. You'll have your own ideas. Now, photography is like Sudoku. It's got nine equal squares. No, that's not right. No, it's a, it's a problem solver. It, it's like a crossword. Four down is dog's dinner. No, that's not right either, is it? It's a puzzle that needs solving. Yes, you have an idea of a picture you want to take, but you need to problem solve on how to achieve it. But you may have to make sacrifices too. You may have to increase the ISO to achieve a certain aperture shutter speed combination. But by how far? How much noise are you willing to accept? Will you open the aperture a touch more? or decrease the shutter speed. You may want a frame filling foreground, so you use a wide angle, but will that make the focal point in the distance too small in the frame? These are the compromises and problems you need to learn about and solve. So here's a shot of Ashness Bridge. I shot it with a Mamiya RZ67 at f32 and a 50 mm medium format lens. And here's a shot of Ashness Bridge, also shot by me, but now with a Canon 5D digital camera with 24 mm lens at f11. My shots don't even match. Any camera information I give you will be useless when you get there. There'll probably be some other photographer stood right in front of you like a selfish <laughs> So what does it matter? Anyway, because I was shooting film, my ISO was just 50. Now, if I shot it now on my current digital camera, that would be 200. Your base ISO may be 100. My lens performed at its best at f32 at the time. Now it's around f8. Yours may be f11. I wanted lots of foreground, but also plenty of sky. Now, you may like less foreground and less sky, especially if it isn't as dramatic. Additionally, here I used a Lee two-stop hard grat, but you may only have a case three-stop soft type. I shot with a 24mm equivalent lens, but you prefer the field of view of a 28mm or the slight compression of a 35mm. It's all different and the results will be different. I was there at 4pm in the first picture. You may be there at 6am or 1pm. I was there in November, but you may arrive in early September. But even if you arrive there at 4 p.m. in November with a 24 mm lens and use f8, your picture still won't match mine, even if you find my tripod holes. You could even buy exactly the same kit as mine, then shoot in the exact same location at the same time of year with the same settings, and your result still won't match mine. Even just the conditions will be different, and you need to learn how best to deal with those conditions how bright the sky is compared to the landscape, how fast the water is flowing, how you want to freeze that or not, how windy it is and how that affects the surrounding foliage and your choice of shutter speed. Reading my EXIF data tells you nothing. The same with all of these.
So if anything, you want to ask me why. Learn why I use the settings I did. Knowing I use two seconds means nothing. Knowing why, why I set that speed, means a lot. But if you want to know my settings, I'll tell you. And if you want to know why I use those settings, I'm more than happy to tell you that too. I'm not trying to hide them. I'm happy to tell you my locations as well. I'm not one of those that keeps those secret either. Well, except for this one. Actually, that would have applied outside yesterday. But do think about why you need to know the settings, why you think they will help you. If they do, good, brilliant, but there's a better way to learn. So I, I'm not, I've not needed here, not really. No photography YouTube channel is. Just go out and learn for yourself. It's the best way. So no more. That's it. I'm done. I'm finished. But I'll see you in the next one.